Hello, welcome to another lecture. Today we're going to talk about physical evidence, or service scape as it's called sometimes, one of my uh, favorite subjects in here. The components of a physical evidence we've talked about in, earlier in the uh, semester, but there's the service scape or physical exterior, uh, the, the, excuse me, the facility exterior, the facility interior, and then other intangible aspects. And we're going to go through and talk about those in a little bit more detail. I'm going to ask you to take a look at this video. You'll find it separately on the ELMS. Again, I don't want to violate any, uh, any particular copyright restrictions and so on, but this is a video of the Marina Bay Sands Hotel. Some of you may be familiar with it in Singapore. Uh, a magnificent facility and it really suits itself well to our discussion here because there's so much going on within that facility itself. So I'll use it as a reference as we go through. So take a few minutes, look at that video, I think you'll enjoy it if you haven't seen the place before, and then continue with the uh, lecture from there. So components of physical evidence, uh, the exterior, obviously the design of the exterior, signage, parking, landscape, surrounding environment. Uh, the Marina Bay Sands is, a, is an amazing example of exterior with its size and it's uh, what I call the surfboard on the roof. The, the whole aspect of the, the water feature, uh, everything is quite unique. Even within the, the space of the shops, you have the gondolas. Uh, going on. You have a lot of things happening there. Uh, parking you don't see within that video, but parking is also uh, well positioned out of sight. Essentially most of it's underground in terms of that facility. There is some parking by the exhibition center there, but just all of the issues that go into that is what we're talking about from the physical exterior. And we can go on and on about that. You'll see a couple of examples here of a, a, a resort in the lower left, which is uh, the uh, Pebble Beach Resort. Uh, in California, and you have the Bellagio in the upper right-hand corner in uh, in Las Vegas. Obviously, that places like Las Vegas and uh, have uh, amazing examples of physical uh, it, physical evidence as well. Uh, the components of physical evidence from the interior standpoint. Uh, that's a, another aspect of of what you see here. This this particular uh, example is uh, one of the atriums designed by John Portman. Uh, John Portman's signature was the atriums. He started with the Hyatt Regency in Atlanta and so on, and they, these are the, the kinds of facilities that, that he built. And, and he had this view that um, people were incidental and that you could just turn everything into concrete and, uh, and, and open space. That created some challenges along the way. But when you think about the physical interior of a, of a Marina Bay Sands, you think about the gaming aspect of it, what goes on within that aspect of the gaming side of it, the layout of it, the temperature and so on. We're going to talk more about those in the second part of physical evidence when we get into the five senses and how that affects them. So the components of physical evidence in the facility interior, one of the challenges is here in terms of using the right colors in design. So you see on the left side you see the warm colors, red, you know what red love, danger, excitement, so on and so forth. Yellow, orange, those are the colors that you see in terms of the warm colors for interior design. And then on the right you have the cool colors. So you might think, okay, where do you want the, the cool colors to be? The blues and the greens and the violets and where do you want the, the warm colors? So in a casino, for example, do you want warm colors or cool colors? Uh, in a in a ballroom, do you want warm, warm colors or cool colors? You know, what is, what's the uh, the difference here in terms of what you what you're looking for, what you're trying to get across, in terms of what you're trying to display, in the way you want people to act. Other tangibles we've talked about these before a little bit. Name cards, uh, the stationery. Just to give you a little short story on that. Uh, back in my Shangri-La days, and you see that logo there. You see the gold S. In uh, in Asia, that gold S was a uh, gold leaf. So. They printed all those in Hong Kong, and as you may know, the paper sizes in the U.S. and the paper sizes in in Asia are different. So we tried to explore. They wanted me to explore getting the stationery and the name cards printed in the U.S. So I did. I went out. I got a quote from a friend of mine uh, who gave me an, an incredible quote for gold leaf, and they 
stopped and they when they saw the price and they went what how can that be so expensive well in Asia gold leaf was inexpensive and therefore easy to print so the bottom line decision was they would keep printing them in Asia because they wanted the gold leaf as opposed to just gold uh, color on the uh, on the name card it was part of the image of what they're trying to get across of a five-star type hotel group so billing statements even hotel folios guest checks so on whatever you might do and they of course we've automated an awful lot of this so it may not be as relevant in some cases as it used to be but you're still looking at the representation of what you're sending out even when you're sending something out digitally what it actually looks like uh, reports tickets brochures uh, employee appearance right employee appearance we'll talk more about those kind of things in a minute in terms of the issue of employee uh, benefits what else you can think about that and we'll let our group perhaps expand on some of those kind of things as we go through the discussion what other things show the in the tangibleness from the intangible aspect of the service that's really what we're talking about here so some examples and I won't go through a lot of these but uh, think about an airline for example look in the middle there uh, the service gate aspect of the airline gate the uh, air the airplane exterior the airplane interior what it looks like what it's supposed to be in terms of the, the quality it shows and then the other intangibles the tickets the food the uniforms all of those kind of things are there and sporting events you see similar kind of things in other words think about what the service gate and other tangibles are trying to say about the weather the level of the service that's going to be delivered to you so if we look at this framework and I think this is an important framework to look through if you look from left to right here we think about the physical environment dimensions ambient conditions in other words what we're going to be talking about later in the five senses the space and the function the signs artifacts all of that leads to a perceived service gate right perceived service gate now then you have both employee responses to that service gate and you have customer responses to it in each case you have a cognitive thinking you have an emotional and you have a physiological aspect in terms of the way they respond that leads to individual behaviors of both the employee and of the customer which leads to the social interactions that you're looking for so that's the purpose of a service gate so the role of of service gate in terms of packaging the service it conveys expectations right conveys expectations so the first thing it does is the physical evidence gives you cues as to how the image will be of that facility if it's a five star if it's a three star hotel for example if it's a fine dining restaurant versus a quick service and we're going to do some of that in terms of an exercise you're going to do here uh, today in the in the class session and then it influences perception so the image develop what you expected it to be then reduces our perceived risk so in other words we feel that what we're going to get is what we get we are, our perceptions are going to meet, meet our expectations and so that reduces our cognitive dissonance in other words our dissatisfaction if you will with the uh, with the service if things are done properly so it facilitates both provides information how am I to act it facilitates ordering process how does this work and it manages customers barriers separate different customers and so on uh, in the process today we're using more of that with the physical distancing that we have to do than we've ever done before so that helps reduce your potential dissatisfaction if you feel things have been designed effectively for safety and security for example it socializes employees and customers okay, the uniform tells you what to expect so Southwest Airlines that we mentioned before when I was talking about the Raider system they did an informal uniform so that influences your expectation of them uh, they're they're a symbol of what you expect to be so they give you the percent they give you what what expectation you have and then the perceptions follow with regards to that right so if you look at the um, the well-dressed personnel for example the they could be more considered more intelligent better workers more interactive okay, it, it kind of differentiates you it also shows who you are and what you're supposed to do I remember earlier I mentioned the Portman situation with the color schemes and so on he had lack of color and in one of the hotels that that he uh, designed the uniforms were gray in the background was gray and they couldn't even find the servers in the restaurant when people were looking for them so they had to change those colors in those days Weston was running those hotels the Starbucks dress code lookbook 
is something that I've included uh, in the uh, in, in the Elms that you can take a look at and see a little bit more detail, but this gives you just a, a brief aspect of the apron. Okay, so the apron looks the same, and this would be true whether you were dealing with the Philippines or the United States or wherever you might be. And how the name uh, the name is shown, those kind of things are all part of the uh, what you expect of the Starbucks barista or the Starbucks um, uh, server, whoever it might be that you're dealing with in Starbucks, it sets the image of what they expect to be. So they have a very distinct book about what you can do, what your, uh, what kind of hair style you can have. Uh, all of those kind of things are all part of the package of what they want to do in terms of their image. So when we take about the service scape in terms of positioning, what this basically is showing you here is, sorry about that. What this is showing you here is the employees, the customers, and the firm themselves in terms of how you set the service quality because there's got to be a balance here and this is not always easy to balance off in terms of the process so you have on the on the technical side you have the employees and the firm how it works and then on the functional side you have the customers who are actually going to experience it right so there's a balance between the employee and the firm in terms of cost efficiency how much money are you going to spend on service we're going to talk about this a lot more towards the end of the semester in terms of what the right balance is. And then the customer aspect has to do with customization. Once again, my mouse is going faster than what I want it to. There we go. So on the customer side, you have the customization. So the more customization, the more it's going to cost, right? So we have to think about that balance in terms of what we're dealing with here. So our objectives in customization, we meet the needs of the customer. In the functional service, it's meeting the needs of the customer as well. All right, both functional service, customization. Technical service, that's about the employee, the efficiency of the employee. And then cost efficiency see, is the firm or the owner or the management or whatever it may be in the process in order to reduce cost and keep, make things still productive. So we're going to do a service scape exercise, and I'll just do a brief introduction of it here, and I'll let the group run from there. But we're going to look at four different types of contrasting types of services in the same type of uh, facilities. So we'll have a quick service versus family dining, a boutique versus full service hotel, a corporate meeting versus an exhibition trade show, economy coach versus business class airline. So we're looking here at the difference between them. You're looking at the physical uh, aspects of it, the physical uh, evidence that shows you what type of facility it is and how they're different from each other. What do you see different in each one? I mean, Jolie B in a fine dining restaurant, well, a family dining restaurant, I should say, uh, or a boutique and a uh, and a five star hotel, a corporate meeting at the top, and an exhibition at the bottom here, and business class service versus economy. Okay, what do you expect to do there? So using ServiceScape, some other examples. Let's think of our Starbucks. Starbucks, and I think one of the concepts that they bring out is their felt sense, right? Their felt sense. Uh, they want to be the third place, uh, home, work, and Starbucks. So how do you balance that out? How do you set up the service scape? How do you set up the physical evidence, that is, of a Starbucks so that it feels like it's a third place to you, a home, work, and Starbucks? Here's another poll question for you. I'd like you to all take that question. We can talk about it in class. And this one, unlike the others, this one has a correct answer. And that completes this particular lecture. Thanks.